Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be putting the first ride on a horse that we've had in for training. He came with some baggage and had some difficult spots. So we're hitting a couple of red lights with some of the groundwork that we're doing. I think we've worked through that okay, and we're ready to put the first ride on. Let's get into it. So if you guys have watched some of the other videos uh, that we've made using this horse, um, you kind of know how we got to where we are now and uh, some of the issues that we worked through. But um, since the last video, I've had one other training day, and then here we are today. Um, and I feel like he's ready to ride today because he's accepting the saddle, he's accepting the bit, and he's starting to get better at yielding to pressure and uh, not having um, either a defensive response, which is kind of what his go-to was. I felt like he had a lot of pressure put on him at times, but he didn't really understand it. And so he would um, get defensive or have a big reaction to it. So we've kind of worked through that. And then um, kind of the last piece that where things kind of fell apart in the last video was I went to put a feel on the bit and his first reaction was to have a significant reaction. And most of his issues were known for being in the saddle. And so I felt like it made a lot of sense to go ahead and get his yields better to the bit on the ground before stepping on him. So that's where we're at. And uh, let me just show you a couple things that we were doing. Um, so one of those is I'm gonna use this rein as an indirect rein and kind of come up towards the saddle. And then I would use my leg to ask him to do a hind quarter yield. And this should be a relaxing thing for a horse, but he tends to get a little defensive and a little sticky in his hindquarters because his go-to, if things went bad for him, or he felt bad about how things were going, he would rear. And so the opposite of rearing would be yielding the hindquarters and lowering his head. So obviously those are two things I focused on a lot. And there's basically three ways that I addressed it. One is in that hindquarter yield. The second is going to be the three circle game where I'm asking him to walk a circle around me and just move his hip to a slightly larger circle. And I've practiced this a fair bit with him now, um, but he, it's hard for him to give it to me. So I'm asking him to bend his head and neck, bend his rib cage, and push his hip out on a slightly larger circle. So I'm looking for that left hind to step up and under and over the right hind. There we go. Getting a little bit of a disengagement there. There, 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 very good. <clears throat> So that still needs a little more practice. And it's not a matter of does he know it or not, it's a matter of can he turn loose that much? That's kind of where he's at with it. Um, the third one is side passing. And this horse kind of has some trouble. So anything that requires him to relax through his rib cage and step over his, with his hind feet is challenging for him. And so those are the things that we're practicing probably the most, more than just asking him to walk trot can around a circle, which is pretty easy for him to do. So now I'm just gonna ask him to move sideways. And I've kind of added in um, doing it off the rail and doing it with his head down. So I just kind of set a frame with my left hand here. And then we'll just ask him to get a couple of steps sideways. You can see, not perfect. But the first time we tried this, it was a pretty significant reaction. And he's kind of getting a little bit more on board with that plan. And so basically, I'm just giving myself the tools that I would need to recover under saddle if he got bothered. If he got bothered to the point that he was thinking about rearing, I'm gonna to try to talk him out of that using some hind quarter yields, bending his head to the side, uh, that sort of thing, not just controlling him with two reins, which would probably bring up the, the rear response a bit more. So those are kind of some of the pre-ride checks that I've been going through with him now that he's accepting the saddle and uh, we're ready to put a first ride on. So from what I understand, it's been quite a while since he's been ridden. So this first ride back is hopefully gonna be kind of releasing him to being rode. I have done a, a quite a bit of groundwork here uh, leading up to this, probably 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully it's just a nice, calm, easy ride. We can get him to understand pressure a little bit better. And that's gonna be the main, uh, main priority here. They kind of walked off there, not too big a deal. So my main focus is going to be getting him to follow a feel. You can see how concerned he is about the bit. Because I believe most of his previous riding was contact and right away controlling him. And so my plan is to kind of um, just get him to, to follow a feel and uh, just accept the bit a little bit better, do a few yields, and kind of just be happy to have me on his back instead of on the ground where I was asking him for a little bit harder work. So in my mind, I'm kind of restarting him. So I'm basically just gonna go through similar to what I would do if I was Colt starting.
Hey, if you guys would like to see more detailed training videos and be able to ask me specific questions about your horse, you're gonna wanna join my Patreon page. It's only $10 a month, you're gonna get a lot out of it. We post a new video every Wednesday and even do monthly challenges. Go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. And again, his go-to is kind of to get a little locked up and not move his feet. So we're gonna to try to release him to a bit more forward, which is kind of ironic because he had to go pretty, pretty forward to do the jumps that he was doing. But if he felt uncomfortable while he was doing it, then it kind of leads to them getting a little bit shut down. But my big goal is gonna to be to get all this head stuff that he's doing and just get him softening up to the bit. So a lot of that head flipping usually comes from the rider riding with contact and not giving him a loose rein. I'm giving him a loose rein here at first, and then I'm just gonna be talking into some yields, some turning, kind of one rein at a time. I like that he seems to be accepting the rider really well. He doesn't seem to be afraid that I'm up here at all, uh, zero, which is great. <clears throat> um, you can see he can't travel out in a straight line. He doesn't know where to go. And that comes from being micromanaged when he was ridden, of kind of giving him direction at all times. If you put your hand down and you squeeze a horse, they should ride out in a straight line. Now, you have to teach them to do that. Horses don't come out of the box traveling in straight lines. They're prey animals, so they kind of weave in and out and kind of move the way he's moving now. But what I'm going to do is let him kind of commit to a direction, so he's kind of fading to the left. And then I'm just going to pick up a rein and just redirect him to the right here. Very non non kind of non-confrontational but just um, kind of peppering it in to getting a little bit of control by way of just steering him where I wanted to go and then turning him loose again so again my aim is for it to be a good experience for him and uh, start peppering in some some more yields where he doesn't feel like he needs to be fighting with the reins as much so that's better already he kind of traveled out in a little bit bigger circle that's good now I'm going to try a little hindquarter yield, so I'm going to bend him. I'm just going to hold here and see if I can get his hindquarters to take a step over. There we go. I like that little yield we just got there. And again, it may not seem like a big deal, but that kind of stuff is hard for him and it's, it's new to him um, and not something that he wants to give up very easily. I really like how calm he is. Um, I'm very happy with his kind of demeanor. Like he, to me, he kind of wants to get along and wants to be a gentle horse, um, but he kind of needed the opportunity to understand pressure a little bit better because these, that's the tools that we're gonna use to ask him to go where we wanna go and how we wanna go there. But one thing that you should also notice is when I pick up a feel, I'm setting a boundary there. I reach for him, so I'm really soft at first. Then I close my hand and I hold. And if he pulls back into it, he kind of runs into a post until I feel his direction of travel change and then I let it go. So I'm not just letting go of it when he um, bends his head and neck, I'm waiting for his direction of travel to change. And I'm also, I'm offering him a soft feel at first with terms of how slow I reach for him. And then I kind of get a hold here. Make a turn and then turn him loose. And again, I haven't, I haven't seen him rode. I don't know how, exactly how long it's been since he's been ridden. I know he has been ridden. I know he's been shown and jumping and that sort of thing. Um, but I don't really know what his last experience was or how long ago that's been. And so when you kind of have that going on, for me, I'd rather just take my time, work through the fundamentals and make sure the horse is, is understanding what I'm doing, not just kind of getting on and seeing all, everything he can do. Um, it's about just kind of establishing a, a connection with some basic things, turn right and left, going and, and, and slowing down. See if he's connecting to my life up and life down. And I'll just kind of start there. And then it should progress quickly if there is some um, education in there that's kind of under the surface. Now right there he tossed his head pretty strong so I think I'll take that as an opportunity to come all the way into a hindquarter yield. So I'm just gonna sign him up to that a little bit stronger there. I 
I would like for him to make this noise and blow out. He tends to hold tension a lot through his rib cage, which is why those yields are difficult for him. And um, if we could get that under saddle, that would be a big deal. But I feel like the head tossing's getting a little bit less as we go here, as he realizes I'm not trying to micromanage him and control, control his every step. And then I'm offering him a soft feel. I'm offering him a soft feel at first, but then it's followed up by a post where I'm holding and not letting him just pull the rein back out of my hand either. So there's kind of a balance to it. One thing that'll get you in trouble pretty quick with horses is if you reach for them too fast and you pull right away. So when he feels me really holding strong on the rein, it's a hold, not a pull. And there's a, there's a big difference to that of how that horse makes the horse feel. So like there, he went to pull pretty strong. So I just kind of closed my hand, closed my grip and just set that frame in my body and waited for him to get soft to it. Now I'm gonna see if he kind of understands some leg cues. I'm gonna see if I can put my inside leg on here and just kind of widen out of the circle. See if he knows what that means. That feels like a ant, <laughs> not really. I'm squeezing my leg pretty good there and he's not really, oh, there we go, got a step. So that's a, that's a really important move for a horse to know where if you wanna make your circle a little bigger, can you get there through your inside leg kind of to the outside rein and, and bringing that horse's whole body over rather than pulling him left just to turn him back around and pull to the right to get him back to the right. So I think he kind of knew that. Maybe he's just a hair rusty on it. A little e bit easier this direction. That was good. We'll take that. So there's kind of three rein positions that I want him to understand really clearly. Um, as a recovery strategy, if he were to get defensive. So one is I'm gonna sit and ask for a one rein stop and you can see he's kind of rubbernecking where his body's traveling that way, but his nose is tipped to the right or left. So teaching him to do a one rein stop and then um, teaching him to recover with a hind quarter heel. So basically if he got out of control, I would try to bend his head around and redirect his feet more than just pulling back on both reins, which could lead to him rearing and flipping over. The next recovery strategy is gonna be this hind quarter yield. And you can see this is exactly what he does on the ground. He kind of just gets a little locked up there because he kind of feels like he's in a bind right there. Then he got a little spooky. So it's funny, right as I was about to say, he feels like he's in a bind because I had his head bent so far around trying to get that hind quarter yield. Then he felt a little bound up and spooked there. But through that groundwork that we did, he didn't all of a sudden grab himself with a cinch and get tight and go back to bucking or, or something like that. Did a little spook and then we recovered and moved on. But you can see he's got to get more comfortable in those positions so that those aren't a scary thing to him, that those can be a relaxing thing for him. So we got the hind quarter yield. And then the third one, the third recovery strategy is going to be relax rain, which is a good time to do it here after that little spook he just did there. And I would also say that it, to me, it's fairly common. If you have a horse that has been ridden with two reins in contact like this a lot, when you turn the reins loose and you let them go, they will tend to be a little more spooky because now you're giving them permission to look around and have a mind of their own a bit, but in a good way. Because as they learn to have more self-confidence riding on a loose rein, they're gonna be more solid than a horse that's only confident if they are completely with the rider and trusting the rider at all times. That can kind of lend itself to having some issues um, with what you're seeing with him with tossing his head, learning to rear, kind of learning a few bad habits there. Um, if all we ever do is just ride him with contact to try to keep him from ever spooking or doing something we don't want. So what I'm gonna practice now is just, I'm gonna see if I can get him to trot out a little bit and then I'm gonna bend him down to relax rain. That was nice, nice soft trot. It's interesting to me that he has good impulsion. I would, if I just was left to my own devices and making stuff up, I would think a horse that had kind of done a lot of a, uh, jumping and rode with contact would probably be fairly impulsive. So it's kind of interesting to me that he's feeling like more woe than go. But I do think part of that is him being a little shut down and it's, he's a little bit worried about doing things at times.
and you can see he's kind of taking up a counter bend there. So I'll reach for him, ask him to relax. And so he's learning these recovery strategies right now. These aren't really something that relaxes him yet, but as he gets more familiar with them and more comfortable, they can be relaxing strategies. Because again, after being bothered, we're gonna ask him to bend on that circle and get soft and start to recover. And that can lead to him getting more, more secure, more confident with those things. And so basically for this next four or five rides, it'll be just walking and trotting, teaching him some of these, excuse me, teaching him some of these recovery strategies and uh, just kind of building his confidence in some of these yields, not pushing him. And um, once, once we kind of have some, some baseline of some skills that we can fall back on, if things go bad, when you're trying something harder, whether it's canter transitions or riding outside or something like that, you need tools to help recover if something bothers them. It's like, it's going to happen at times. And so the question is, how big of a spook or a blow up did they have? Was it, was it manageable? Did we shorten their flight line where they didn't get too bothered? And then did we get them to recover quickly? And if those two things are there, then you can put the horse in more difficult situations and recover and have safe rides. So that's the plan uh, from here. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.